In this video, we'll review the concept of government failure and explore the various reasons for government failure in a macroeconomic context. Government failure occurs when government intervention results in an inefficient allocation of resources and reduces overall economic welfare. There are many reasons why this may occur, and we're going to look at several of them, starting with corruption. Corruption can lead to government failure if corrupt officials misallocate public funds. Instead of funds being spent in a manner that would benefit society the most, officials may turn to other projects that they have been enticed towards. They may also award contracts to higher-cost contractors that they might have a relationship with, potentially with the anticipation of a future benefit. Regulatory capture occurs when a regulatory body is influenced by the special interest they are supposed to be regulating, and then favors the special interest over the public it serves. For example, if a high-ranking executive at a pharmaceutical company takes a job as a pharmaceutical drug regulator, they may still favor their old company and their old contacts at the previous company, as well as the industry with the anticipation of some present or future benefit. Crowding out occurs when government borrowing causes a rise in interest rates that then discourages private investment and borrowing. If the government chooses to finance a budget deficit by borrowing from the public, it can reduce the amount of loanable funds available for others to borrow and will drive up the interest rate, thus discouraging borrowing. Enforcing laws and collecting taxes have associated administrative costs. The level of these costs can offset the potential gains of the policy measure. Government bureaucracy involved with regulating businesses may also decrease investment and thus harm the long-term growth of the economy. Distorting price signals. Government subsidies tend to result in lower prices, which means that actual market prices are not communicated properly and that the market forces of supply and demand are not freely determining resource allocation. For example, if significant agricultural subsidies are given to American farmers, then their produce will appear cheaper than the rest of the world. This can make it seem as though American farmers are able to produce at the lowest cost. This might cause resources to flow into the American agricultural industry that may not have had the competition for agricultural goods been free of subsidies and support. True low-cost producers may get shut out of the market, resulting in an inefficient allocation of resources. As elections approach, politicians may focus on policies that favor their supporters in order to win votes, but this policy doesn't necessarily benefit society. So this would be an example of short-termism. Political interference occurs when politicians interfere in key economic decisions. For example, a U.S. president might pressure science agencies to alter their recommendations or reporting to support their political agenda, influencing how and what information is shared with the public. If there are information gaps, then there is likely to be imperfect information. If the government has incorrect or incomplete information about an economic issue, say the size of an output gap, then their policy response may not be sufficient to address that very output gap. Even if they can correctly estimate the size of the output gap, the government would still need to know an accurate figure for the multiplier to ensure that they do not trade one problem for another. Pretty much all government policy typically faces these three lags. The first lag is in recognition, which means identifying a problem in a timely manner. The second lag is in the time it takes to develop and argue a solution. Typically, the government must develop a set of solutions and adopt which one is most suitable for the problem at hand. Throughout this process of developing a solution, arguing which one is the best, and then choosing one, precious time is passing. Finally, there is a lag around the implementation of the policy. Policies are not immediately effective. As an example, Monetary policy is generally seen to be effective from 18 to 24 months after it has initially taken place. Even if government policies are passed in sufficient time, consumer and business confidence may limit their effectiveness. Contractionary policies aimed at restraining the economy 
may not be successful if the overall level of consumer and business confidence is high. Similarly, if consumer and business confidence is low, expansionary policies might be limited in their ability to get consumers and businesses spending. Finally, there are numerous policy conflicts that exist. These have been covered in detail in the previous video. As the government attempts to achieve one macroeconomic objective, they may impact another. For example, reducing inflation may require a contractionary monetary policy which may also result in rising unemployment due to the fall in output. So by now, you should have a thorough understanding of government failure and how it can impact macroeconomic policy. If you have any questions, leave them below and let's try and answer them together. That's us done for now and I will see you in the next one.